What we want this meeting to culminate in is the uh, Reduce Research Waste and Reward Diligence Reward Action Plan, which will be a modification of the recommendations that were made um, a year or two ago about how we can increase value and reduce waste in research, and that will come together on the last um, Wednesday afternoon of the conference. What we'd like you to do is there are six speakers named in your programme there who will be talking about the different sections um, of uh, reducing waste. And we'd like you to speak to them if you have any particular suggestions for what the action plan should involve. And I should also say that the researchwaste.net website uh, is where you can find those recommendations and also where you can leave comments during this conference uh, to feed into our iterative discussions during this conference in how that action plan should look like. And we will consult with you about that in the final session of the conference. Sort of the waste is due to many reasons. One is the, the way research um, uh, priorities are set, uh, the way research is designed, conducted, and analyzed, the way research is regulated and managed, the lack of publication of lots of research, and we heard lots about that yesterday, and even the research that is published and the poor reporting of that product. And so um, one of the efforts was uh, last year, the Lancet uh, produced uh, this series, and um, it was uh, uh, seven articles. And um, from the series, uh, there was, as uh, Rustam mentioned, uh, 17 uh, recommendations. And so one of the recommendations was uh, research funders and regulators should demand that proposals for additional primary research are justified by systematic reviews showing what is already known and increased funding uh, for the required synthesis of existing evidence. And that's recommendation three. My name is Siveta Simera and I'm program manager of the Equator Network and deputy director of the UK Equator Centre. And in the next couple of days, we will all focus on uh, inefficiencies, if you like, of the research process, of various steps and processes, or more likely on opportunities where to make this research more efficient, much more valuable to all users of the research. Clinical practice and uh, public health policy decisions in particular depend on high quality, reliable information about research. So research that's conducted really is only going to have value if, it is, uh, if the methods are valid and if the findings are published in a usable form. Um, we need reliable evidence from the research that's conducted, good quality research and good reporting of that research. And unfortunately, this is often not what we get. Firstly, uh, a published research article should not mislead. And secondly, it should provide enough information on the methods used to allow somebody else to repeat that study. And I'm using the word repetition rather than reproducibility because I think I see reproducibility as being used mainly in terms of the results. So you cannot evaluate whether findings are reproducible unless the methods are repeatable. So I want to make that important distinction. And then a journal article should present both the methods and the results in a form to allow the study to be included in a subsequent systematic review and a meta-analysis. It's not just the numerical results, it's the, it's the actual methodology. In other words, and this is uh, the um, sort of catchphrase for our, our meeting in Freiburg a couple of years ago, we need accuracy, completeness, and transparency. who might be involved in improving research publications. The people we tend to think about, first of all, are researchers and authors, and I'm a huge fan of reporting guidelines. However, I don't think they are a panacea. I think we're applying the pressure probably at the wrong place. We need to look certainly at researchers. They certainly need to take responsibility for this, but we also need to look at the research institutions we need to look at the funders. We need to look at the regulators. Editors have got to, and publishers have got to take a share of responsibility in looking at the usability and usefulness of what they produce. Peer reviewers, to a certain extent as well, have got to take some responsibility. 
And then two I've put in red because I think they're so often completely left out. Communications experts and the users of the research, whoever those users might be. Now, they may be other researchers, they may be clinicians, they may be patients, they could be policy makers, but with there's so little research about how research reports are used. And unless we know how they're used, we really don't understand whether they are fit for purpose. And when we recognize the deficiencies, we need surely to go to the experts in communication to tell us how to fix these problems. So I would emphasize those two groups who I think are very often missing from our discussions. And perhaps to admit a little bit of humility that as researchers, we're not necessarily experts in communication. And there's a whole lot of research being done that we need to look at. So in terms of looking to the future, uh, is there merit uh, in monitoring change across a broad spectrum of stakeholders? And Rustin put up a slide this morning to, to give you some uh, depth and perspective of what those stakeholders, who they might be, and there may be others that we would want to um, examine as well. And, and if, if we should uh, monitor change, uh, how might we do that? And so the idea of developing a reward uh, observatory, I, I thought I would just share with you uh, some initial thoughts about that. Uh, what might the uh, objectives of such an observatory be? Clearly, if an observatory was to, uh, to work and be effective, it needs to uh, sort of promote collaborations between organizations and individuals uh, with similar uh, visions and missions uh, in terms of trying to monitor uh, change and progress uh, by increasing value and reducing waste. So there were two big messages from this conference. First, we heard a lot more documentation about the problems in clinical trials, which we knew about. But more importantly, we heard about problems that have been identified in other areas of clinical research and also preclinical research, such as animal or lab research. But second, and probably more importantly, we started to hear about some great solutions, some great activities that were occurring. For example, new centres that had opened up to start doing and training people in systematic reviews for animal research, um, a, a registry to allow animal research to be registered. So all sorts of new activities, including the good work that had been done in clinical research by the National Institutes of Health Research in the UK. But these good activities shouldn't remain isolated. We need a global action in order to fix the problems that are occurring in waste in research. Every funder, every research organisation, every publisher should ask every year what else they can be doing to reduce this waste in research and improve its value. A start would be to sign up to the Reward Alliance campaign.